They took a B-17, ripped out the nose, stuffed in a giant, experimental, turboprop engine, and then flew it with the rest of the engines shut off. Why? Well, they thought it might be the future of strategic bombing. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park. Let's dive in. By the end of World War II, the B-17 Flying Fortress had more than earned its place in aviation history. But one aircraft, serial number 44-85813, wasn't done just yet. After the war, it was converted into a flying laboratory for one of the boldest propulsion experiments of its time, the Wright XT-35 Typhoon turboprop engine. They stripped this B-17 of its guns and armor, pushed the cockpit back, and mounted an enormous fifth engine right in the nose. This became the EB-17G, or Boeing Model 299Z. And that nose-mounted engine? It was so powerful, it could outpull all four of the bomber's original engines combined. Back in 1942, Wright Aeronautical started working on gas turbines without even having a contract. While most manufacturers were locked into wartime piston engine production, Wright was secretly planning for what came next. By mid-1944, they pitched the XT-35, a 5,000-plus horsepower turboprop that would dwarf anything flying. It was meant to replace massive piston engines like the R-4360 or power future bombers like the Northrop B-35 and the Convair B-36. Eventually, the Air Force bit. They gave Wright a contract on November 22, 1944, and for a while, the XT-35 became their top priority engine development project. The XT-35 was a monster. It had a 59-inch diameter, was over 11 feet long, and tipped the scales at more than 2 tons. The early version, the XT-35-W-1, pushed out 6,090 equivalent shaft horsepower. Later versions promised up to 8,900 shaft horsepower. That's insane power, especially in the 1940s. It used a three-stage centrifugal compressor, a three-stage axle turbine, and an electrically controlled Curtis variable pitch propeller. This engine didn't just make noise, it made statements, and it blew exhaust out from under the B-17's belly like something from a science fiction film. Test flights started in September 1947. The EB-17G flew with its four main props feathered, meaning turned flat into the wind for minimal drag, leaving just the nose-mounted turboprop doing all the work. That was a sight, an old warbird slicing through the sky with only its nose engine spinning, like a flying testbed for the future. But behind the scenes, the future wasn't looking so bright. The X-35 was powerful, but it was heavy and thirsty. Its fuel consumption was much higher than the piston engines it aimed to replace. There was another problem. Props of the day just couldn't handle the power, especially at high altitude. Engineers called for new propeller designs, contra-rotating props, and updated gearboxes, each one adding delays. Meanwhile, jet engine technology was catching up fast. The Air Force started to lose patience. By 1948, even the XB-52 program which the XT-35 was originally meant for, was in doubt. The B-52 would eventually fly with jets, not turboprops. In 1949, the XT-35 program was officially cancelled. Just three engines had been built, and after spending over $23 million, the Air Force decided to bet on the future of jet power instead. But that wasn't the end of 44-85813. After the X-35 test, The aircraft went on to test other engines, including the J-65 jet from 1950 to 1951. In the late 50s and into the 60s, it flew again, now with a Wright R-3350 piston engine in the nose, and eventually a T-64 turbine with a six-bladed propeller. For nearly two decades, it helped shape propeller and engine research. In 1966, the plane was sold to E-Wing Aviation, and a few years later to Arnold Kolb at Black Hills Aviation. They swapped out the oddball nose for a more traditional B-17 forward fuselage and converted it into a fire bomber, now designated C-12. It flew aerial firefighting missions into the late 70s. 
but on April 16, 1980, while fighting a wildfire near Ben Penn, North Carolina, the aircraft crashed. That could have been the end of its story, but the bones of the EB-17G still had one more role to play. In 1985, the wreck was salvaged and became a parts donor for other B-17 restoration projects, but it wasn't scrapped. Today, what's left of 44-85813 is being rebuilt into a flying B-17 once again at the Champaign Aviation Museum in Urbana, Ohio. The aircraft, now known as the Champagne Lady, is a patchwork of four different B-17s, but it includes the soul of that old testbed bomber. And while they're not restoring the wild turboprop nose, the legacy of that strange, powerful experiment still lingers in the aluminum bones of this historic aircraft. Sometimes, the wildest ideas don't pan out, but they still push the boundaries of what's possible. The XT-35 never made it to the flight line, but it gave engineers a glimpse of what came next. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this story, give it a like and share it with a fellow aviation nerd. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Airpark.